Hello. My name is Anna and I do water testing on the River Dart and its tributaries for the West Country Rivers Trust Citizen Science Programme. I fell into this about three years ago when a friend and I went to an open morning on the Dartington Estate with WRT's Simon Browning. A group of us were taken through the procedure beside the dart and I immediately knew that this was something that would be both a pleasure to undertake and would also provide important information about the resilience or otherwise of our watercourses. I swim in the dart all year round and it keeps me sane. It is a wonderful antidote to my day job and I felt that it was important to give something back to the river in some way. I also wanted to learn more about the river and its surrounding flora and fauna. I felt that my knowledge of the fish, the mammals, the birds, the insects, the invertebrates, as well as the trees and plants that grow on its banks was severely, my knowledge was severely lacking. I've now been randomly doing river testing for the best part of three years. WRT have supported me and provided me with the equipment after a small donation to the Trust. The tests are straightforward and simple to do. You need a camera or a smartphone with a camera, a WRT kit, wellies, and most importantly, you need keen eyes, ears, good powers of observation and a little bit of patience. For me, the most enjoyable thing about doing these surveys is to arrive, put your stuff down, open a thermos and then just look and listen. If the test is done in a hurried fashion, then you will always tick no wildlife seen on the report. But if you sit still and wait, the chances are, and if you're lucky, you'll see a dipper or a wagtail, you might even see a kingfisher. The scientific part of the testing is really straightforward. If I can do it, anybody can. In the dark catchment, we have now managed to get together a group of volunteers who have each been allocated a site on most of the tributaries that run into the east, west and double dark, mainly or nearly all above, apart from one, above Buckfast Lee, so the higher dark. I think it's such a positive thing for each of these volunteers to take ownership of their own site and test it monthly. Over the period of a year, they will then build up a relationship with this stretch of water and as the seasons change, will notice the plant life and wildlife come and go. How lovely is that? When I first started the surveys, I used to take the paper form with me, complete it by the river, and then transcri transcribe it onto the cartographer website when I got home. I'm now so familiar with the form that I can do most of it from memory when I'm back on my laptop. I suppose that there are many people out here who could do this directly from their camera onto the website if you've got internet where you are, but I, I don't do that. I do take a photograph of my results uh, on the TDI meter and the phosphates so that I remember when I get home what the results are to upload. Like many of you watching this, I feel at times desperate about the damage that soil erosion and pollution of all types are doing to our rivers and streams and ultimately the sea. After 20 years of swimming in the river, I've seen a steady decline in fish numbers and many of the trout that I see have signs of disease on their bodies. Just conducting these sites makes me feel that at least somebody, maybe further up in the food chain, will be looking at the information we provide and it may be used to change and hopefully even improve environmental policy in the West Country and in the UK as a whole.